All right. Um, next quiz or studying. I love this blurb right here. This is once again from that document I mentioned earlier. This is about uh, memorization. Okay. Imagine a muddy road over which a farmer drives a truck every day. Each time he drives over the road, the rut deepens. As he increases the load the truck is carrying, the rut grows deeper still. In a similar way, each time we repeat a verse of scripture, the memory pattern it leaves gets a little deeper. And when we concentrate, we add weight to the process, forming deeper and deeper patterns in our brain. So I love this, love this, love this, love this. So we talk about, you know, quoting, we talk about memorization. It, it's, 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 you, we're, it's about developing command of our material. We're going to talk about that command a lot. So um, the, it's, it's about repetition over time. You can't cram for nationals in a week, right? You can't cram for a tournament and have that, those neural pathways that, that stay there. And we're developing these kids so that the word is in their hearts. And in, in, in order for it to be in their hearts, it has to be over time. And that takes daily discipline. Um, I, I love the idea of weight, adding weight to, to deepen these, these, these patterns. So um, we, there's different ways to quote. A lot of kids speed quote, right? And when they're speed quoting, the, a lot of kids get to the point where they're not, they don't have any weight on their truck. They're thinking about playing basketball and what they're going to eat for dinner while they're quoting 150 verses, right? They're not even there. There, it's, it's just, it's subconscious. And that's important. It's important to have for your quizzers to have their material in their subconscious because you want them to be able to just unconsciously quote the answer to question 20, right? With the, when the pressure's on. But I've had kids that can speak quote through all the material. I say, hey, you know what? Slow down and quote it like you're answering a quotation question at a quiz. And then they start misquoting. They start, you know, they just, it, and it's just like, you can't quote slow. And, and the reason why, I, there are times, a lot of times where I would rather my kids quote half the material consciously with weight, with concentration, with thinking about the words of the scripture, about thinking about the concepts, you know, um, really diving in and, and really grasping and chewing on those verses than just speak quoting. Because what is that doing? That, that it, they're seeing patterns. They're seeing things in the scripture. They are, uh, they are proving the scripture, right, Darren? Mm -hmm. Is that a good way to That's say the it? Word. That's the New Testament word. That's the New Testament word for it, proving the scripture in their minds. And that is what puts the scripture in your heart, right? Um, and that's, that's what we want. Um, Overlearning is important. That is the concept of, oh, I know it. Yeah, but do you know it? well enough to answer the six part cross on question 20 at BQE and the quiz that'll take you the, to nationals. You know, there, there's a difference between knowing it and being able to quote it in the kitchen and knowing it under pressure with, with everything on the end uh, and knowing it, you know, say you're, you're, you're feeling under the weather, you're tired and you're under pressure. You have to over know your material if you want to succeed at the highest level. You can't replace time. Command of material comes from conscious repetition over time. You can't cram. I had a quizzer. It took him way too long to, to realize that. It was before nationals. And I had one quizzer that had studied consistently all year. And then he really thought that he could kind of cram it in two months. And it, 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 you, you, can, you can't replace that command of material. That, that ability to hear a word and just pull it. I call it pulling it. Mm -hmm. Pull, pull that scripture. Find the reference. Find, find the event. Find the 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 verse. <laughs> find the verse which with which that information is, is from. And that is so crucial. I, one thing I love, and I'm I'm probably gonna talk about Ava. He's here. I'm probably gonna talk about him a lot. But I see it in his life. I see him teaching Bible studies, and I see someone say something in a discussion, and I see it trigger. I see him pull that information from Romans, pull something from Max, pull something from, from what we learned in doctrine. And, and that comes from, a, from conscious repetition over time. Uh, a gentle firmness is necessary to hold kids accountable. I like that term gentle firmness because we, we have to be firm, but we, we can't be taskmasters, right? We, we have to do everything in love to hold our kids accountable. 
And uh, oh yeah, hold your kids accountable. <laughs> that's, a, that's a that's a good point. We we have to to hold our kids accountable. And actually, Check we could have put yourselves too. Oh you know? yeah, and ourselves. We we um we are responsible to keep them responsible. And check in with your quizzers on a regular basis. I know every Sunday, uh, usually when I walk in the sanctuary, my quizzers kind of scatter because they know that I'm going to come talk to them and ask them how they how they've been doing on their studies. Uh, it's important that that we, you know, even though you know what the answer is going to be, it's important. I don't see what you're it's important that um, that we do check in. Um, so let's uh, let's do that. Let's hold our kids accountable. Um, next, memorization. Uh, different kids memorize different ways. Everybody probably knows all this already, but let's go through it. Audibly, visually, interactively. I've been doing dance routines with my five-year-old so that she can memorize. Do you have a verses. recording of that? I, I do not. And I, and that would sell. Right if there. I did, it Move would be not sent to you. Um, <laughs> writing, right? You know, writing musically. Everybody knows about the the, the music recordings. Uh, get your kids to find a place conducive to studying. That's, you know, do they need to study alone? Do they need to study with someone close with music, with plenty of space to move? The goal is to eliminate distractions for concentration. I spent a lot of time with that guy, Avery over there, and he had to study with somebody. As far as learning, he had to learn with someone. And it was really I was just like, Abe, can you please just learn your verses today without me reading them to you over and over? But that's how he learned. That's how he, he enjoyed. I think he enjoyed the interactiveness. He enjoyed the, the quality time, spending time together with someone in the word of God. Um, and that's, that's how he learned best. That's not how everyone learns best. Some people, you know, I had another kid that she just wanted to sit in a closet with her flip chart, you know, and that's, that's what she wanted to do to learn. Every kid's different. And that's, that's true with parenting. That's true with, with coaching. Every it goes to different. the point about knowing know your kids know your kids yeah. know your kids know what's know how they function how they think and then uh, i use the we five verse chunk method is what i did so avery and other kids will always like learn their verses but then you have to it's one thing to learn them and to learn them in a day and to quote them it's another thing to get that command up and to, to drill it in like pound it in your brain so we would always just take five verses five verse chunks and just Let's quote through these five. Okay, now let's quote them backwards. Now let's mix them up. Now I'm going to say the beginning and you say the reference. Now I'm going to say the reference and you just say the beginning. And let's just let's just take these five verses and just dice them up and, and, and dig into it until you got it. And then, and then you're still going to have to review those. But if you really just take time, five verses at a time, take those five verses and just absolutely um, just dive in. That's, that's what's worked the best for us. And um, I had something that I, it just completely took my mind, which was really good. You didn't oh, well, use the five it'll, chunk it'll method and you forgot. I, it. I, I didn't use yeah. the five chunk method. Uh, all right, we're going to move on to quoting. And, and a lot of these Philip has already mentioned um, and talked about, you know, it, enough to cover, you know, obviously quoting in order, uh, just quoting, starting at verse one, quoting through the material, quoting out of order, uh, speed quoting, which we talked about, right? Um, not speed quoting, again, which he talked about. Very important to do both of those things. And really, those are probably the four things that you focus on, you spend the most time on. But there is also a lot of value in some of these other things. Cross-quoting. In other words, chapter 1, verse 1, chapter 2, verse 1, chapter 3, verse 1, chapter 4, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 2, chapter 2, verse 2, chapter 3, verse 3, or two, 3, verse 2. <laughs> Got myself confused. But you see what I mean, right? That That can help. Because if, you're, if your quizzer interrupts a question that says, according to verse one of chat, and they're just a little too soon, and they don't get that chapter, if they've been doing that, they can fly through those verse ones really quickly in their mind. And they can, they can grab something and pull it. And, and we're going to talk about it later, but interruptions is all about percentages. And so when you get in those situations, you're looking for ways to increase the percentage that you have of getting it correct. That can be a big help, having had done that. Reverse quoting. Quoting them backwards just goes to making sure that you have it fully ingrained in your brain, right? Um, quoting it by beginnings, as he said, and by endings, as he said. And the one thing that I really want to hit on here is that last bullet in that when we memorize, when we quote, when we practice, when we do questions, what we're really doing is training brains. You're training your brain, your quizzer's brain, how to react in certain situations, how to process information, how to find information that's stored in their brain. And the more ways that you can train their brain to access what's there, 
the more opportunities they will have when it comes to finding themselves in a place in a question to, to get that question right. And so that's sort of the approach here. That's why we want to, to try to incorporate. Now, you don't want to shotgun pattern on the wall and make it so where they can't do any of it well, right? You sort of take the main four and you build on them. But the concept is the more ways that you can sort of look at from all different sides of that material and access that data from a mental standpoint, the more opportunities you give yourself in a question to get the question correct. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to build those percentages to get to a place where we can interrupt at a high percentage. And again, we'll talk about that later. Um, a couple of things on this. Uh, all these different ways of quoting, I, there are times when we're in practice and we're doing things and quizzers making mistakes. And I can tell, okay, if you quote this way, this will help you eliminate that mistake. So let's say kids can speak. We kind of spoke to this. Kids can speak what they're, through their material, but they're misquoting quotation questions in practice. What do they need to do? They need to not speak quote. They need to quote consciously, slowly, practice, make sure that they're really thinking through things. Um, you want to make sure your kids know their verses, make them quote by verse endings. What do kids tend to do? They hear a reference. As long as they can make that reference connection to the beginning of the verse and they can start quoting the verse, they can quote the rest of the verse, right? So what do they do? They're conscious that their mind's on, they start the verse, they get halfway through the verse and their brain switches to the unconscious mode and they're not even thinking anymore, right? So what does that do? It makes, the, it, makes it harder for the brain to pull information at the ends of verses. I'm telling you all the time, like we'll have a, we'll have a, we'll have a question, we'll be quizzing in practice and we'll have a quotation question. And it says a piece of information, you've got to quote the verse that, that it comes from, right? And almost always when they, you know, when they don't know their material truly yet, if it's at the end of a verse, if the information in the questions at the end of a verse, they usually can't pull it unless it was like truly unique and crazy. Now, when, when why is that? Because when they're quoting, their brain's going into unconscious mode and they're not Com consciously comprehending what they're saying when they're quoting at the ends of verses. So what do you do? Quote by verse endings. It is not fun the first time you quote by verse endings, but if your kids can quote by verse endings, they know their stuff. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but it, it, it is very, very helpful. Uh, you know, if they're struggling with quotation completions, quote by verse beginnings, reverse quoting, it's just a way, you know, quote a chapter backwards. The, the, the only reason to do that is to switch it up. Just give your kid a different challenge. If they do the same thing every day and it gets mundane, they're not going to be consciously involved. They're not going to be uh, just actively thinking through stuff. All right. Recognition. So this is stuff that I truly believe and I push my kids on, uh, to try to do as you're learning your verses. What do you want to notice as you're learning? As you're learning, you're going through chapters, you're going through verses. Things to, to note, cross-references, and kids do this. If quiz, quizzers' minds, they, they just make connections, right? Uh, oh, look, oh, that's a two-time word. That would be a good question. But when you find these cross-references, it's not enough to me for, for, to take it to the next level to just be like, oh, look, that's a two-time word. It's more like, okay, what cross-reference question can be written on there? Is there a cross-reference question that makes sense? Because it's one thing if it's a two-time word or a similar phrase, but is there actually, besides quote the two verses that contain this word, is there, you know, um, uh, Jesus kicked what, according to this verse, and John kicked, I know Jesus didn't, I don't know if he kicked anything, but, uh, you know, that's a, that, okay, kicked, that, you know, that's a, that's a word that, that has a cross-reference, and what we look for is words with patterns where part of it's different, right? It's either going to be a different verse, different that chapter. Be, that would be, be a unique biblical word. It would be kicked, right? Yeah, maybe, I know we can find it. Um, lists, Lists in verses. So a lot of a lot of verses list Jesus doing X and X and X and, and, and Z and Y. Okay, what is that? That's a list. How many things and what are they? How many times have you heard a how many and what are they question in a quiz? A lot. Guess what? There's only so many of those that you can write as a question writer. So what's something we can do? We can notate, take note, recognize, oh, that's a good how many and what are they? You know, and uh, there's there's plenty of them. I, I, I wish I could think. Uh, okay, like the, the verse in 
uh, with the names like there's 11 geographical locations and two verses that's a great how many and what are they these verses name how many geographical locations what are they if you make that if your quizzers are making that question in their mind when they're learning the verses or when they're quoting oh that's a good how many and what are they how much easier is that is it going to be to recognize that in a quiz um identified pronouns we're going to talk a lot about pronouns yeah. later we'll, but we'll talk about pronouns a well. while yeah just quizzers should not just keep learning without noticing and taking note of hey who is he referring to who who is she who is they as they're learning the verses uh spoken words great quotations right quote the words jesus said concerning blah if you take note of that stuff while you learn it, it becomes a lot easier later quotes from other scriptures as it is written so those are great nuggets for question writing so you should take note of them as you're learning questions statements exclamations punctuation there are a lot of things in senior quizzing that a lot of questions based on punctuation so what can we do as we're learning or as the senior quizzers are learning take note of it study your questions in the verses study your exclamations notice statements like if a uh, if a verse doesn't end in a period and it goes to the next verse, then that's a that's a great statement question. That's a good 30 point potential quotation question. Quote the statement that names Barabbas. And you know there's only one verse that names Barabbas, but it's gonna probably be more than one verse or just part of a verse because that statement is a, is a sentence ending with the period, right? So if you take note of that, oh look, this verse has three statements in it. This verse has two statements in it. Oh, this, this statement actually goes from verse two to verse five. If you take note of that, if the quizzers take note of that as they're learning, um, that is crucial for them to be prepared for certain types of questions. Um, comparisons and contrasts. This year, especially in the book of Proverbs, there are contrasts and comparisons all over the place. You're going to just, okay, everyone, first of all, everyone should know what a contrast is. Okay. Comparison is comparing two things to show how they're alike. A contrast is comparing two things to show how they're different. It's a, it's a um, pillar of question writing in, in senior Bible quizzing. So take note of those. Uh, usually the word but or the word like is used in these. So if you get your quizzer, say, hey, I want you to go and find all the contrasts in chapter three and, uh, and, and, and text them to me or whatever. If your quizzers are finding those amazing questions, oh, this contrast is concerning a dove that's a good question you know if, if your quizzer makes that connection um in their own brains and writes that question even not on paper they just write that question in their mind then if they hear in a quiz what contrast concerning a they've already made that question in their brain so they're they're the the neural pathways are already there uh next textual patterns verb patterns preposition patterns subjects all those things we're really going to dive into that later. Um, context, connections, and contrast. This is big with, we talk about Brother Faubert's writing at Nationals. Mm -hmm. he, he loves context connections. He loves to, 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 to cross-reference concepts and context, which yeah, is not necessarily this phrase is here and this phrase is here, but this idea is here and this idea is here. Right. Context cross-reference type question. Most of the time you see those through similar phrases, but not always. So if you note those, make note of them. Right. Um, the goal being that your quizzer should be able to hear or read a verse and identify potential questions that could be asked. So you should be able to tell your kids, you know, hey, give me a four part, give me a two, three or four part question on this first. And they should be able to make a good question. They should be able to see patterns and that takes practice, right? And that takes discussion. That takes talking through. So, and you know, if, if your kids are a little more inexperienced, then, you know, they might come up with some bad questions and you had to be prepared to be like, actually, that probably wouldn't be written like that, but it'd probably be written like this. And that's on us to figure that out. Right. It's on us to know, like, actually, a, a question writer likely wouldn't write it that way. They probably write it this way. And it's, it's not easy. But if we can help our kids do that and help show our kids to, to see that stuff, then uh, then they're going to be prepared. Okay. Okay. Ten minutes. We're 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 making good time. All right. Charting. We we could talk for days about charting. Yeah. Um, before you get started, this is this is pretty basic stuff here. Material knowledge is in reference. You have to know your stuff. You have to know your references. If you don't know your references, 
you're not going to be able to, charting is not even worth it. Um, some quizzers get it naturally. Some must extensively chart. I, I, I talk a lot about Avery and Sherwin. Avery was kind of a natural when it came to pooling information. We just, he just, he hear a word, you can kind of, he could find it quickly, right? Two time, three time words, whatever. Um, it helped when he studied for sure, but he was a, had a little more of a knack to it where Sherwin um, was, was an, uh, is another great quizzer that I, that I had was blessed to coach and he just kind of struggled with it but as soon as he studied it if he ran through his one-time words ran through his two-time words ran through stuff like that then he had it and it was just it's just different brains work different kind of ways and that's okay kids are different and just you will not chart everything you can it's impossible there you can chart for for years and it's just that's okay what's important i feel is, like we should caveat that unless you're a beard slipper yeah okay that's true oh you're or, happy, or, or or you're from concord california <laughs> um and, and that's okay love you what guys. what we want to do is uh is figure out what's the most useful what's the most efficient okay like in proverbs it's going to be a lot different than last year's study right yeah. it's going to be a lot different than a, than a than a than a gospel than than an epistle and so maybe there's something that we studied a lot last year that we don't really need to say this year. Okay, for instance, there's not a lot of proper names this year. There were a lot of proper names last year. We really had to study names, right? This year, there's not a lot of names. There's not a lot of geographic locations. There's a lot of contrasts. There's a lot of body parts, which body parts is like the worst thing to chart, but... Um, Proverbs, there's a lot of context connections. Yes, context, yeah. Okay, uh, so these are the things that I push, and, and Darren and I, you know, as shocking as it may seem, we don't agree on everything. So we, we do just- Philip, I, I allow you the liberty to be incorrect on something. Okay, well, thank you. Um, so we every coach is different and everybody's kids are different. So there's no one right way to do things, but I wanted to share with everybody what I try to get my kids to do. I'm not saying that they do this, I try, um, but this is the getting started charting. This is the stuff that I want my kids to run through, to, to take note of as they're learning and that we try to run through before every tournament as the year goes on. Because I feel like if you run through this prior to each tournament and you kind of build on that as the year goes on, this stuff just kind of becomes second nature, right? And I'm not saying you have to memorize this stuff. What I'm saying is that, um, what I'm saying is that, we're good. Okay, sorry, my computer was acting funny. Um, it's good to, to make some connections, to go through this stuff. And it, it just helps you see some potential questions before, before they come up. One-time words, unique beginnings, proper names, geographic locations, animals, numbers, body parts, all that is simple. The only thing on here that's not in the power charting is numbers, um, which I typically just take the time to chart that stuff out myself. You know, you just, you do a control F and you look for the number one, which the number one is usually in a million places. So then I kind of ignore that one. And then don't I don't type in the two. actual number. It will pull up a uh, whole lot. Yeah, of don't things. do that. You yeah. type O N E and then type two and then type three. And uh, you type all those things and I put it in an Excel spreadsheet and then I, you know, send it to my kids. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that I think is beneficial turn to tournament to kind of build on as the year goes to kind of just keep things simple. And by the way, everybody's going to get a copy of these slides. So I just want to make sure everyone knows. Okay. Um, I want everyone to take notes, but I, I, you will get a copy of these slides. Um, we're, we have we're like three more another, slides and we're going to take a break. Take, take a break. Um, the uh, charting, the next step after the material is mastered. So after we're at the end of the year or maybe prior to BQE, maybe they've got the BQE material down. This is kind of the next step that I try to push. Repeated phrases. Um, notice word count. So one of the type of questions that, um, that you can hear is what seven word phrase that concludes verse three of chapter one is also found in which other verse of study. That's kind of a common um, staple, right? We can prepare for those. How can we prepare for those? We can get our list of repeated phrases and we can do, a, you know, I'm an, I'm an Excel person. So I can just, you know, just write a little formula that counts the words, then you put it in the table and there you go. Um, and then what I typically do is I literally, well, I also write questions, but I, I write all of those that I could conceive being a question. And I make sure all my kids hear those before, before, you know, BQE or something. Um, because if they've heard it before, that's next time they hear it, 
it's going to be a lot easier than the first time, right? And this is one of those things that, I, uh, that I'm going to talk about more is there are certain times of questions that are hard unless you do X and then it's easy, right? That's hard. Cross-reference. Right, Cross-references or even quotation questions. Even quotation questions. So, it, 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 that's hard unless you prepared for it, specifically that. Um, similar phrases, ending word phrases, consecutives. I call consecutives verses that have information in it because they like two consecutive verses named Barabbas. I'm going to use Barabbas as the example, I guess, today. Um, multiples is um, quote the verse that twice names Barabbas. Those are, I call those multiples. Um, we, uh, we have all that charted out and, and make sure my kids really go through that and find the, the keyword. So like maybe the word um bringing isn't a good multiples word like twice the word bringing like that's kind of funky right like we the, we're probably not going to hear that in a question but twice the word love twice the word grace um stuff like that those words those key words uh that you oh that's a good question you know you could definitely see that being written if if your kids make that connection if you go over that stuff um it's easier when it comes to term and time and then uh, the last thing is the concordance, which we're, we can talk about that a little bit later. Um, studying chart work. So I purchased BQ Powers chart work. Um, and then uh, I, I, I don't have any complaints about it. Um, then uh, the BQ Learn app has, you know, one, two, three, two, you know, words, flashcards you can do. Create your own flashcards. That's what the that's what most of the, the great quizzers do is you, you take the time to create those flashcards. It kind of helps you grab onto that. I use Quizlet a lot. I don't know if everyone's familiar with Quizlet. It's an online free flashcard creation software. So I spoiled my kids so much. I put a ton of charting in Quizlet in separate little, uh, little pieces and I, and I send them folders and say, hey, this is your BQE charting folder. Okay, they can go and study animals, they can go and study body parts, they can go and study proper names, they can study their repeated phrases, and just go through, go through Quizlet that way. Um, and then the concordance, which, you know, that's where I want to show you what the concordance looks like for those that aren't familiar with it. And then uh, you probably won't chart everything and that's okay. I just want to emphasize that, like, that it's, it's, it's okay for you not to get to everything. What's important for you as a coach is to identify the important things that this will give us an advantage if we do this and to, and to focus on those. Uh, this is what a concordance looks like. Um, if, you, if you didn't know, it's uh, available for purchase at BQ Powers. It's literally a concordance. It's every word in our study and it shows every place that that word is. So I know that this is how Brother Faubert writes his cross-reference questions. It's how he, he writes a lot of his questions is by going through this and finding similarities. Um, and this is actually from uh, Josh Martinez sent me this picture of how he highlighted. So he would, he would highlight if there were similar words before and after a certain word. So like, for instance, about, he highlighted roundabout, roundabout, right? Um, so to just look for, for potential cross references in there, this is, this is like the last, this is like the last boss like the in the pinnacle. video game. Yeah. It's yeah. like, this is, this is how you really dig in deep, but, um, this is, uh, this is the place where you can really see and notice crosses together. Um, but it's definitely. And the thing advantage. too is, is you, you, <laughs> the funny thing is you may be doing all of this for one question but it may be the question. Right. I know it's, it's hard to do that. And I, I was just talking to Darren last night. I feel like it's a lot of quizzers can't really see past their hand in front of their face when it comes to the, the year, right? When it comes to the quiz season. And I'm always thinking about August, the end of July, like right now, like I'm thinking about July and I'm thinking about that every day. I'm thinking about state finals. I'm thinking about BQ. I'm thinking about nationals like every day. I'm thinking that that goes through my mind. We need to prepare for that. And usually kids are like, I got tests this week. You know, I'm trying to pass my driver's license test. I don't know what I'm going to eat for dinner. I'm really hungry. Like they, they, they just, it's, it's hard for them to, to see long-term. Right. And, and that's just, I was that same way when I was a kid. And, and, and so I, I get it, but. Um, All right. We're going to anyway. take a little break before we do that. Does anybody have any questions about stuff we've covered so far online or in, 
person. Brother Frost, maybe you got questions over there. Okay, go ahead, sir. Incentives are great. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. So, so brother, actually, um, never mind. I thought we had it in the mic. Um, brother Frost was asking about holding kids accountable and what that looks like in practice and what we found that, that works for us. Uh, what well, it doesn't, one method doesn't always work for all kids. That's absolutely as you've true. already discovered. Yeah. Right? As you've yeah. already discovered. Um, one thing that I have is that I try with the older, more mature kids is genuinely talking to them weekly, making sure that I have a conversation with them. Like, Hey, how are you doing? And don't scold them. I don't scold them. I have that gentle firmness. Like, Hey, remember those goals you set? Remember what you want to accomplish today? Hey, remember your teammates are counting on you, you know, like having those mature, treat them like an adult, right? If you treat them with respect, they should treat you back with respect. I always believe in you have to give respect to get it. And if you want your kids to respect you, you want them to respect your teammates, um, treat them like an adult, treat them with, you know, as a mature adult and have conversation, genuine conversations with them. This is older, this, you know, this, uh, obviously it's hard to deal with a 12 year old, right? I mean, we, we can, some 12 year olds. Um, and then another thing is uh, we, we do every, before every practice, we do our spot checks. That's kind of worked for us. Um, so ubcquiz.com, it's easy to, to spit out spot checks, which is just 10 verses and it just spits out 10 random verses and you just print it out. And then you get your kids to quote them. And then we, uh, you know, you lose points for, for misquotes or if you can't pull the verse, you miss this many points and you just kind of come up with a little system and you just kind of score them. And that way, when they say, you know, when your kids say, oh, I, I know my stuff. And then you're like, well, you're getting the 50 on all your spot checks. Like, you know, what's, what's up with that? So it's just kind of a way to, and some kids excel at stuff like that. Some kids don't, but at least you have something to reference to. Right. And then I think also that's another really good opportunity that you can use tournaments for. It, it's, it's not hard to, in a kind way, highlight, um, places in tournaments where they did not perform as well as they should have or thought they could or whatever. Right. And that's sort of, that's, that's coaching. Okay. You remember, you, you don't want to study today. I get it. I don't want to do things today either, but you remember back here, what happened? It happened because of today. It didn't happen because you had a bad day in that tournament. It happened because you had four bad days where you didn't want to study and you, and so sort of reminding them, you know, that verse where Paul says, stir up your mind by way of remembrance. It's sort of, I found that sort of, especially the older quizzers, sort of reminding them of the outcome of what happens if you don't sort of re-motivates them in ways. And even going back and watching quizzes, watch, watch a few quizzes where they performed really well and where they performed not so well and ask them, what's the difference here? Why were you so good here? And you were less good here. Um, and, and more times than not, it has to do with material command. Right. And, and that is, a, I've found, a, a unique and good way to sort of help them motivate themselves, keep themselves accountable. And, and we're in this, sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. As the kids get older. It's difficult for me as a coach to, to hold a 12 year old accountable when their parents are not willing to do that at home. So it's a team approach, really. I feel like it has to be a team approach. Um, as a 16, 17 year old, 18 year old, when they get more independent, I feel like then it becomes more the quizzer's responsibility. And, and the, you know, they are developing independence, um, not just in quizzing, but in their life. And, and they need to learn the responsibilities that go along with that independence. Right. I agree. What was the question from online? So this is kind of getting a little bit into the weeds, but I, I understand what you're saying. The, the only time that. So, sort of I, summarize what he asked. So, okay. Summarize what he, so he was, he was asking about statements. Um, every, hopefully everyone can read in the chat, but uh, he was asking about statements and can statement questions be you, typically it's part of a verse for 10 pointers or multiple verses for 20, 30 pointers, but can a statement question, like what statement naming this, where that statement is just a verse because you could say what verse instead. So I typically in, from what I've noticed and how I write and I try to, to, to mimic what I've seen elsewhere is 
the only time that you say what statement and that statement is just one verse, like it's not part of a verse, it's not multiple verses, just one verse, is when it's typically in like a cross reference. So I, I'd write what question naming Peter is recorded and what statement naming Peter is recorded, where that statement is just a verse, right? But I'm not going to write what question and what verse. I'm going to write what question, what statement, even if that statement's a, a one single verse. So typically, if it's a quotation and you hear quote the statement or what statement, and it's a like a it's just that's the only answer, then typically that statement should trigger you to say it's going to be part of a verse or multiple verses, unless it's in a cross reference like that example that I gave. I hope that helps, Tim. Okay. Yeah. The other thing I I would say to that is that. Two things. One, we have to understand, we're going to take a break here in just a second. We have to understand that there are no rules. Question writers can write whatever questions they want. That doesn't necessarily make them good. They can write whatever they want to write. Our role as coaches, part of what we do is understand what's being written. Find those patterns. Do the research. Check it out. Look at the quizzes. Go back and when we have a state tournament, get, if you can get a copy of the quizzes, get a copy of the quizzes. That's the sort of the the not behind the board work that coaches can do to help themselves understand and then help their quizzers understand. Find those patterns. We're going to talk about those things when we talk about diving into the questions today. Um, the other thing I would say is that this speaks to that that again that philosophical difference that exists between juniors and seniors. Because when you come from a world of juniors, an environment of juniors, your brain is trained to bound things by verse reference. That's not the case in senior quizzing. Things are more often bounded by context than by verse reference. And context is generally bounded by punctuation. So you have to sort of flip the script on how you think about things when you're finishing questions, answering questions. And again, as Philip indicated, there are certain guidelines usually that quiz writers try to stay consistent to. But you, you have to understand, you have to sort of try to move away from that mentality of things being bounded by verses as opposed to being bounded by punctuation because punctuation generally contains the context and the content. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to take a short break. We'll be back in, let's call it uh, can we say 11? 11, 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. We'll be back. All right. Thank y'all. <laughs> 